Hey, what's up, everybody? If you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here, then make sure you contribute to the Cash App. Make sure you contribute to the PayPal. Make sure you donate to the Super Chat. It's only you and your contributions that keep this thing going. Thanks. Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. Thank you, everybody, for your contributions. I appreciate it. Let's keep it going. Donate to the Super Chat. Donate to the PayPal. Donate to the Cash App. It's your contributions and your donations that are cause for this platform to grow. Let our voice be the voice, the preeminent voice in Black America. Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Dennis Sperling, and I am back, and I want to talk to you guys about a very, very, very beautiful form of martial arts called capoeira. Um, now, here's the thing. Many of you all have seen capoeira. Some of you all even know it, it has its origins in Africa, but many of you all haven't quite put the puzzle together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the opportunity to first look at capoeira because I want you guys to see what it looks like. Okay, I want you to see how beautiful it is and how uh, similar it is to dance. And so what I have prepared already is I have a, a video, a quick little uh, video that kind of shows you what Capoeira looks like. If you guys would just uh, hang in there for one minute, because you know I got to pull it up, baby. But uh, either way, I hope everybody's enjoying their uh, time here on Dennis Sperling Unfiltered. I, uh, Hope you all appreciate the time and dedication I put into um, putting these shows together because I think that uh, this is something that we need. I think that we as black men, we recognize that we cannot change. Um, well, let me say it like this. No matter what happens, they can't change our rich past. And so what we need to do is to be able to dig into our past and pull out the things that we need. But this is what I want to show you, brothers. This is uh, some images of some brothers down in Brazil, Brasileiros, practicing capoeira. So I want you guys to check this out. And I want you just to study how beautiful the moves, is, the moves are. Now remember, they did this to disguise it as a uh, dance. So check it out. Now, one thing you'll notice is that they don't actually touch each other because remember, they were in Brazil. They were this developed uh, in Brazil um, as a, 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 a form of martial arts that the enslaved black men practice that look like a dance. And so in order to not bring attention to themselves, you know, at least initially, um, they, they wouldn't hit each other. So it would never be any physical contact. So let's go ahead and just continue watching, but just look how beautiful and graceful it is. Just the athleticism alone, man. This ain't your, this ain't your, your grandpa's boxing gym, right? Look at the athleticism required to even perform these moves.
Mind you, none of this is coordinated. They're doing all this on the fly. This is freestyle. <laughs> this is freestyle martial arts, and they're careful not to hit each other. So imagine the body control and the spatial awareness that these men have developed over the years of practicing Kapama Wera. <laughs> For those of you who practice any sort of martial arts or boxing, notice how they're fighting offline. There's nobody, it's not a straight up head up fight like Shotokan. It's more, it's an offline kind of fighting. It's like they're, the angles are amazing. You can get a kick from a, a kick coming from under you and up, over you and down, sideways at angles. And so there's never really any way to tell what's going to happen. In, 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 in a fight with somebody like this because you would be dazzled by the moves, first of all, and then the kick just comes from nowhere. Let's continue watching. <laughs> kind of get the hint of that. So uh, look, the thing is, um, I want to read this to you. Basically, during the six, 16th century, the Portuguese brought, sold, bought, sold, traded, and transported African peoples. Brazil, uh, with its vast territory, received 40% of these African people via the transatlantic slave trade. 40% of the Africans brought from Africa went to Brazil they didn't go to the United States. They did not go to the Caribbean. They went to Brazil. There is the, the population of Africans outside of Brazil, or I'm sorry, the, the population of Bra Africans in Brazil is larger than any other place on this planet other than, uh, 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 other, other than uh, Africa itself. So this is, <laughs> this is what we're looking at now. Um, the early history of capoeira is recorded by historians such as Dr. Dish Obi. Originally, the ancestors' tradition originated from the Kingdom of Congo. Now, remember when we spoke last week about Alfonso the First? Remember him? He was the one. He was the king. He was he was uh, he was uh, mesmerized by Portuguese uh, uh, religion, i.e., Catholic Church. He was mesmerized by their education. He took on a Portuguese name. And so because of that, Portugal had a direct relationship with uh, the Congo. And of course, if you guys remember, let me, uh, I wanna make sure that uh, I give you this map of Africa because right now we're just talking about places. But you guys, those of y'all, if you haven't seen it, check out my report that we did on, um, on, um, um, Alfonso the first and, and 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 you know the Congo and and that because this is I want this is this is it's all related it's all in here together right now I'm going to try to make this map a little bigger so you all can see it but this is the Democratic Republic of Congo right here in the center I'll try and increase the size and uh -oh. lost it let me get it back hold on fellas Hang in there. Oh, Lord. 
Okay, there we go. That should be. So this is the Democratic Republic of Congo. And Portugal had a special relationship though. So they were all in the interior here. Now, if I pull this out and give you a world map, you'll see just how close, um, well, not close, but you'll see the proximity of um, Brazil to that section. Let me see, hopefully it comes up. Uh, no, okay, there we go. All right, so this is Brazil here, and this is the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, so bam, right across there, it's a straight shot. Now to go from here to here is a lot easier to go from here to go all the way up here and then go all the way over here, right? Remember, in order to get to the Caribbean, you had to sail all the way up here and go down here. You have to leave this coast. Really, the majority of us was taking it over there. This is a straight shot. The, the trade winds will take you straight over there. Bam, you're in Brazil. You can't miss it. And so it makes sense that 40% of our brothers and sisters were taken from the African mainland, i.e. the Congo, directly to Brazil. But back to the subject at hand, uh, and was so so originally the ancestor tradition originated from the kingdom of Congo and was called in Golo or in Golo known as known as Angola today, a type of ritual dance that used several elements of kicking, headbutting, slap boxing, walking on one's hands, deception, evasions, etc. The purpose was also religious as it both provided a link to the afterlife which was the opposite of the living world and enabled a person to channel their ancestors into their dance. For example, during the dance, a person might become possessed by an ancestor in the past who was talented at Ingolo. So basically, it's like they, they, they were doing what their ancestors do. They, they, they felt the possession of their ancestors. They imagine it's like if you related to Bruce Lee or somebody and then you get really into it, you ah, you know, uh, and, and so I, I get it. I understand that uh, this could be applied in a martial arts setting in both combat and warfare, which was called in Singa. In Singa, the difference to in Angola being that it included weapon use and grappling. During the Atlantic slave trade, this tradition transferred around the Americas, Brazil, Capoeira, uh, Caribbean, Damine, and the United States knocking and kicking. So here's the thing. Let's go ahead and let's Go ahead and start. If you enjoy this, if you think this is worthwhile, make sure you contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. Um, before we get started, good, I want to kind of explain to you guys. So I think martial arts is important for us because what we're doing is we're celebrating African warrior culture. And we, we did the, the ladies first. Uh, we did black samurais yesterday, African samurais. And now we're doing Capoeira Brazilian martial arts, which originated in the Congo. Now, many of us as Black American men, we've had our manhood curtailed. We've had our, uh, many of us, they try, they go out of their way to emasculate us. They do all of these different things to try to undermine uh, our Black manhood to the point now we're reduced to talking to each other about things that really matter on the manosphere. This is not something that we can do typically. We can't go to pool halls. We can't have a football game and sit around and talk. We have to basically be, we have to talk to each other on the internet. You know, this is this is kind of what we're left to doing. But the thing is, family, it is what we have now. And at this point, it provides an opportunity for us to do a history lesson. And this is why it's important. I myself involve my sons in martial arts because it teaches discipline, it teaches hard work, it teaches integrity, it teaches so many different about cooperation, toughness, all the things you need, respect, diligence, precision, all the things you need as a man to help enhance your manhood and your masculinity and to be a, 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 a martial arts practitioner. It in, it in it itself is going to help you become a better man. The boys that I bring up, many of my sons that I, I post up, they are all involved in some form of martial arts, at least the older two are. And the reason that I do that 
is because I don't want them to become a burden to you black people. I don't want them to grow up in our community and become a burden to you. I don't want you to have to look at them shooting people or robbing people or getting shot or operating in a manner that's disrespectful and un undisciplined. See, I'm trying to raise good men at the point where I leave this earth and I leave this existence. My legacy will be my son. So I invest in and in, in helping instilling that warrior mindset, that Bushido code, that respect, that integrity, that hard work. That's helping these young men that I that are my sons become a credit to you other black men and the black community at large. You don't have to worry about them because I'm investing the time I need. And so I think it's very important that, that we consider these martial arts and the fact that Capoeira, which is a beautiful form of martial art, it should let you know you have your own African culture. You're not just stuck with Kung Fu and uh, Judo and uh, Shotokan and even American boxing. You have your own forms of martial arts that you can trace straight back to the country uh, of origin where many of us came from either uh, different parts of the West Coast of Africa, this one specifically, the Congo. So go ahead and let's make that connection. But anyway, let's continue. So Capoeira is a Portuguese pronunciation as an African martial art that combines elements of dance, acrobatics, and music. It was practiced by enslaved Africans in Brazil at the beginning of the 16th century. Mind you, they were from the Congo. We talked about that already. It, it, it is it is known for its acrobatic and complex maneuvers, often involving hands on the ground and inverted kicks. It emphasizes flowing movements rather than fixed stances, right? So instead of standing still, you flow and it's more of a dance. You're not just ha, 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 step to the left, ha, 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 step to the right, kick. It's a flow, it, it flows with it and it's a beautiful thing. It emphasizes flowing movements rather than a fixed stances. The genja, a rocking step, which is when they do this, is usually the focal point of the technique. To the technique, the most widely accepted origin of the word capoeira comes from the tupi words ka, forest, fa, round, referring to the areas of low vegetation in the Brazilian interior, where where fugitives, slaves would hide. A, a practitioner of the art is called a capoeirist. Now look at Brazil. This is Brazil, right? Now, the interior of Brazil could be all up and all of that, right? Think about this. To get from South Carolina to Texas, you guys know that's a day-long drive. That's about a thousand miles. So these folks would run and be in the interior of Brazil. Most of the prop land and all that stuff was on the coast because they need to be able to get it back to the coast and ship it up to, to Europe. So once you made it inside the interior of Brazil, you were gone. <laughs> Nobody coming in there to get you. All right. Um, fugitive slave. So basically, they're saying they would hide. Uh, fugitive slaves would hide. A practitioner of the art is called a capoeirist. The dance, the music was incorporated in the system to disguise the fact that they were practicing fighting techniques. We always were looking for a chance to escape slavery. We were not cooperative. Uh, happy enslaved people, all right? Even in our dances, even though they came up, the ingenious ways they came to be able to defend that, they planned to escape. They planned to fight back. So never let them tell you we didn't fight back. Out, out, out. They had better arms. They had better resources. They knew the layout better, but we still planned to fight back. After the abolition of slavery in Brazil, which actually happened in 1888, uh, about almost 20 years after, uh, uh, over 20 years after the United States abolished slavery. Capital aware was declared illegal at the end of the 19th century. However, by the 1920s, authorities began to relax enforcement on its prohibition and the martial arts began to incorporate capoeira technique into their practices. By the 1970s, capoeira masters started traveling around the world, helping the art become internationally recognized in practice. On the 26th day of November, 2014, Capoeira was granted a special protected status as an intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO. All right. So let's look, let's read about it. We kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, during the 16th century, the Portuguese 
brought, bought, sold, traded, and transported African people to Brazil with its vast territory received 40% of these African people via the Atlantic slave trade. The early history of capoeira is recorded by historians such as Dr. Dishi Obi. Originally, the ancestors' tradition originated in the Kingdom of Congo, Congo and was called Ingolo, Ingolo, Ingolo or Ingolo, known as Angola today, a type of ritual dance that used several elements of kicking, headbutting, slap boxing, walking on one's hands, deception and evasion. The purpose was also religious as it both provoked, provided a link to the afterlife, which was the opposite of living of the living world and enabled a person to channel their ancestors into their dance. For example, during the, a dance, a person might become a might become possessed by an ancestor in the past who was talented and Nigolo. This could be applied to a martial, a, a marital, a, a martial setting in, in, in both combat and warfare, which was called Nsinga. In Nsinga, in the difference to Ngolo being that it included a weapon using and use and grappling. During the Atlantic slave trade, this tradition transferred around the Americas, Brazil, Capoeira, uh, Caribbean, Daime, uh, Dom, Domini, and the United States knocking and kicking. All right, the origins. In the 16th century, Portugal had claimed one of the largest territories of the colonial empires, but lacked people to colonize, especially workers. The Brazilian colony, the Portuguese, like many European colonists, chose to use slavery to build the economy. It's the it's its first century. The main economic activity in the colony was production and processing of sugarcane. Um, Portuguese colonists cre created large sugarcane farms called uh, uh, literally uh, in 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 or I don't know how to say that in Portuguese, but engines of economic activity, which depended on the labor of slaves. Slaves living in inhumane conditions were forced to work hard and suffer physical punishment for small misbehaviors. What they would do in Brazil, they would bring them over there. They would work them to death and then they would replace them. There was no, the average life of a Brazilian slave during that time period was one year. They would work them to death, enslave them, and, now, and kill them and get some new ones. This is, they were running out of people. They were getting everybody they could. But see, this is what they don't talk about. They, it wasn't a plantation with men and women. It was mostly just men, black men and black boys working in those sugarcane fields because they didn't want women. They had a few women, a very small percentage of women, but they didn't need to bring women. Women were only there to work and have babies, or have babies for the most part to replace the slave population. Why do that? We could just take a, wait for this next ship to come from, from Angola unloaded and you don't have to spend 14, 15 years bringing the child up to adulthood. So it was cheaper and more beneficial just to bring men. So this was mostly plantations filled with black men. Although slaves often outnumbered colonists, rebellions were rare because of the lack of weapons, harsh colonial law, disagreement between slaves coming from different African cultures, the lack of knowledge about the new land, its surroundings. In other words, it was so many reasons why they didn't have rebellions. One, they were different cultures. They didn't speak the same language. They didn't have land, uh, weapons. The law was harsh. You know, so if you looked at the wrong person, you might get lynched and killed. Capoeira originated within a product of Angolan tradition called Ingolo, but became applied as a method of survival that was known to slaves. It was a tool with which an escaped slave completely unequipped could survive in a hostile unknown land and face the hunt of capitas de moto, the armed and mounted colonial agents who were charged with finding and capturing escapees. In America, we would call them the slave patrol. As Brazil became more urbanized in the 17th and 18th century, the nature of capoeira stayed largely the same. However, the nature of, nature of slavery, slavery differed from that of the United States, since many slaves were in the cities and were, and were, most, uh, were most of the time Outside the master's supervision, they would be they would be tasked with finding work to do in the form of any manual labor, and re and and in return they would pay the master any money they made. It is here where capoeira was common, as it created opportunities for slaves to practice during and after work. So what happened? They didn't really have that. They said, "Look, you go to the city, you work, whatever money you make, you bring it back to me." The Portuguese had a different mindset than the English. English being the ones who ran. Uh, the United States. Uh, though tolerated until the 1800s, this quickly became criminalized after due 
uh, after due to its association with being African, as well as a threat to the current ruling regime. So basically, it's just like when they took the, the weights out of the penitentiary. Y'all getting too good at this. Y'all getting too big. You guys are getting too strong. You know, you got, yeah, you might not be armed, but you're dangerous with your bodies, okay? Soon, several groups of enslaved persons who liberated themselves gathered and established settlements known as uh, quilombos, quilombos, in the far and hard to reach places. Some quilombos would soon increase in size, attracting more fugitive slaves, Brazilian natives, and even Europeans escaping the law or Christian uh, extremism. Some quilombos would grow to enormous size, becoming a real independent multi-ethnic state. Every day, life in Colombo offered freedom and an opportunity to revive traditional cultures away from colonial oppression. See, again, Brazil was huge. So you can run up in Brazil and hide out. This is a thousand miles from where you landed. So, you know, everybody, natives were running there. Uh, European uh, deserters were running there. Freed African slaves were running there. So they had an the opportunity to do their own thing. Um, let me see. Uh, it's, it was a kind of multi-ethnic community constantly threatened by Portuguese colonial troops. Capoeira involved from a survival to, to a martial art focused on war. The biggest quilombo, the quilombo dos palmaras, which was down here, consisted of many villages which lasted more than a century, resisting at least 24 small attacks and 18 colonial invasions. Portuguese soldiers sometimes said it took more than one dragon to capture a quilombo warrior. Um, since they would defend themselves with strangely moving fighting technique. The provincial governor declared it, it is harder to defeat a Colombo than, than the Dutch invaders. All of them down there was practicing uh, um, um, wear. They all were willing to fight. They grew up doing that. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, it, it was part of the culture. It was a warrior culture. They had changed that slave culture to a warrior culture, and they were ready to defend themselves. In 1808, the prince and future king, Dom, Dom Jehoia, whatever, Hoya IV, a, a, along with the Portuguese court, escaped to Brazil from the invasion of the Portugal of Portugal by Napoleon's troops. Formerly exploited only for its natural resources and commodity crops, the colony finally developed, began to develop as a nation. Portuguese monopoly effectively came to an end when Brazilian ports opened trade with friendly foreign nations. Those cities grew in importance and the Brazilians got permission to manufacture common products once required to be imported from Portugal, such as glass. Uh, registers of capoeira, registries of, of capoeira practices existed since the 18th century in Rio de Janeiro, Salvador and Recife. Due to the city growth, more slaves were brought more Africans were brought uh, to cities and increased, and the increase in social life in the cities made capoeira more prominent and allowed it to be taught and practiced among more people. Because capoeira was often used against the colonial guard in Rio, the colonial government tried to suppress it and establish severe physical punishments uh, to its practice, such as hunting down practitioners and killing them openly. This is how afraid they were of it. If you guys appreciate this, hit the number one button. Make sure you contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. I'm going to run some commercials if y'all don't start contributing to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. Don't just sit there having me ride reading this, running out of breath. Ample data from police records from the 1800s show that many slaves and free colored people were detained for practicing capoeira. From 288 slaves that entered into the Caloboco jail during the the years 1857 to 1858, uh, 80, which is 31%, were arrested for capital wear, and only 28% uh, for running away. In other words, they were arresting people for, for practicing capital wear. Out of 4,303 arrests in Rio, police uh, in, in Rio police in jail, 18,000. In, 62, in 1862, 404 detainees, nearly 40% had been arrested for capoeira. End of slavery. The prohibition of capoeira by the end of the 19th century, slavery was on the verge of departing 
The Brazilian empire reasons included growing Quilombo militia raids and plantations that still use slaves, the refusal of Brazilian army to deal with escapees, the, the growth of Brazilian abolitionist movements, the empire tried to soften the problems with laws to restrict slavery, but finally, Brazil would recognize the end of the institution on May 13, 1888, with a law called the Golden Law, sanctioned by imperial parliament and signed by Princess Isabel. She don't look like a princess, but anyway. However, former slaves now felt abandoned. Most of them had nowhere to live, no jobs, and were despised by Brazilian society, which usually viewed them as lazy work. Ain't that something you had them working for free for about three or 400 years, and now that they don't want to work for free anymore, you call them lazy. Hmm, well, we heard that before. Also, new immigration from Europe and Asia left most former slaves with no employment. Some capoeiras started to use their skills in unconventional ways. Criminals and warlords used capoeiras as bodyguards and hitmen. Groups of capoeiras known as Maltas raided Rio de Janeiro. The two men Maltas were Nagobos, composed of Africans and the Gomeans, composed of native blacks, people of mixed race, poor whites, and Portuguese immigrants. The Nagoyos and the uh, Gomeans were used respectfully as a hit force by conservative and liberal party. In the 1890s, and recently proclaimed, proclaimed Brazilian Republic decreed the prohibition of capoeira in the country. Social conditions were chaotic in Brazil's capital and the police reports identified Capoeira as an, as an advantage in fighting. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Is the connection okay? Is everybody able to hear me? If you can hear me, hit the number one button. If you can't hear me, I'm gonna have to reset this thing. Um, make sure you hit the number one button. If you can hear me, hit the number one button, y'all. All right, let me know you guys can hear me if you can hit the number one button. I need to make sure you guys can hear me. If you can hear me, hit the number one button. All right, hit the number one hey, button. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, up, everybody? Appreciate if you appreciate the format, appreciate the format you appreciate what we're doing here. Make sure you contribute to Make sure you contribute to the Cash App. Make sure you contribute to the PayPal. Make sure you donate to the Super it's Chat. It's only you. It's only you and your contributions to keep this thing going. Thanks. The only time black men are allowed to speak is when it benefits others. So hey, this is your this is your opportunity to speak. I want to hear from you. If you want to make, want to make this voice louder, louder and, clearer, and clearer, what you need, what you need to do is contribute, contribute to the Cash App, PayPal, and the Super, and the super Chat. Chat. I, appreciate I appreciate you. All right, if you guys can hear me, hit the number one. With everything clear? Okay. At the prohibition, any citizen caught practicing capoeira in a fight or for any other reason will be arrested, tortured, and often mutilated by police. Cultural practices such as Rota de Caporello were conducted in remote places with sentries to warn approaching police. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a trip to uh, Angola. We are basically going to go and check out the birthplace of Caporello, right? So let's check this out. Can you hear it? It's a martial art, a dance, a fight, but for these young Angolans, capoeira is above all a way to get in touch with their history. The Portuguese, the first to leave their colonial footprint on Africa, arrived in what is now Angola in the 15th century. By the mid-1800s, as many as four million Africans had been captured and shipped across the Atlantic. A capoeira. Capoeira started as a traditional dance among the African slaves sent to Brazil. For them, it was like a cry for freedom. Through movement and music, the slaves who spoke different languages were able to communicate. The capoeira was also conceived as a self-defense technique. Performed close to the ground, it combines fluid moves with kicks and sweeps. Capoeira's similarity with Angolan traditional dance and its use of local instruments like the berimbau make it unmistakably African, an empowering fact for these young capoeiristas. I know capoeira is from here and now it's practiced around the world. So I'm very proud because it's ours, its roots are here. I'm never going to stop practicing. I'll continue because I love capoeira. Many people still see capoeira as a Brazilian invention. 
but this will certainly change as the discipline becomes more and more popular and its true African origins harder to ignore. All right, so that's a little bit about that. If you guys appreciate this, make sure you contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. We're going to go ahead and hopefully try to get this thing going. It looks like it's out here tripping. The culture Brazil has to offer. Let's see if I can get this one pulled up for you. And of course, something we're calling Capoeira. Slaves and Excuse me. So let's sit back and let's watch this video. I'll reset it so that we can get it in nice and proper. But this goes into a little bit more detail about the history of capoeira. Uh, anybody who has practiced capoeira, if there's anything you want to add, go ahead and do that. If there's something that uh, you know that we don't know, feel free to go ahead and you know make it known in the comments. But I hope you guys are enjoying this. We're already 55 minutes in. If you appreciate it, you got to contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. That lets me know you like what I'm doing here. Otherwise, I feel like y'all are bored. And I don't want you to be bored. I know you got other things to do. Uh, but I think this is important. I think we as black men, we need to erase that simp culture. We need to erase that white knight culture. And the thing is, the only way we can erase that white knight culture and that simp culture is by replacing it with something. So what do we replace with? You, you can't just not replace it with something. You got to put something in its place. And I suggest uh, we replace it with a warrior culture. I think it's good. I'm not asking you to go out there and start fighting in the streets. Um, but what I am asking you to do is take on these tenets, the physical fitness involved, and um, you know the, the the training, the dedication, these sort of things um, are uh, are important. These sort of things do what? These sort of things help build the mind, the body, the spirit, and as the brother said, it's a way you can connect with the ancestors. This is what the ancestors practice. So I'm going to put this link here in the chat room as it comes up. This is Salvador, Brazil, located in the northeastern state of Bahia. It was founded in 1549 by Portuguese colonists and is one of the oldest colonial cities in the Americas. Fair use. Salvador was the first slave port in the Americas and millions of people from Africa were taken there as slaves to work in homes, plantations, and gold mines. Because of the abundance of African descended people, Salvador and the state of Bahia are the center of Brazil's Afro-Brazilian culture. Many of the people from Africa that were taken to Brazil were from the present day nation of Angola. I went to Brazil to learn about the Afro-Brazilian art form Capoeira Angola. It is a type of martial art that uses dance and fight movements and is performed by two people within a hoda, which means circle. Capoeira Angola was developed in Brazil from a combination of cultural traditions from people of Angola and the Congo who were brought to Brazil as slaves. The performance of Capoeira is accompanied by a small orchestra of instruments. The primary instrument is the berimba, which is a musical bow instrument that originates from Angola. All right, so they kind of confirm basically what I've said. This is a uh, a a. a 
a form of martial arts that originated in Angola. Um, there's some more to the film. We can watch it, but you know, I, I want to make you guys get paid on the betting bow are called tokes. Certain tokes are used to imitate aspects of nature and the environment. This toke called Yuna is meant to imitate the call and response of the horned screamer, a bird native to Brazil. This toque, called Cavalaria, was created during the time when the practice of capoeira was illegal in Brazil. Its rhythm imitates the sound of Brazilian police patrolling the streets on their galloping horses. It was played to warn other capoeiristas of the approaching police cavalry. I mean, look how creative they were, man. Look, they, they, they would play that to let them know that the cops are coming. You know, it's almost like how African Americans had the tradition of stitching quilts together and um in those in those quilts would be information about how to get themselves to the to 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 freedom um if you appreciate this hit the number one button i hope you guys are appreciating this. this is more warrior culture i know I, I know we're not talking about some pop culture i know y'all like to talk about relationships but i honestly feel that this is something that's more beneficial for We'll skip ahead a little bit. Animal music is traditional. Some of the songs are played in the bow, like giraffe. The song are also shown doing the ostrich courting dance, which features movements that are similar to capoeira and follows a mixed meter pulse of 6-8. What this is basically doing is it's showing you the air origin of Capoeira. It's showing you what our people did in that region of the country, or that region of Africa. So, and then showing you the similarities in them. Through this contact, the Bantu people would inherit the use of the musical bow. The 2013 documentary Jogo de Corpo features the Umwila people. Let me run that back. I want you to see this. So basically, it's showing you how Capoeira originated in a more Through years of migration, the song would eventually move into southern Angola, where they would encounter darker complected Bantu people. Through this contact, the Bantu people would inherit the use of the musical bow. The 2013 documentary Jogo de Corpo features the Umwila people of southern Angola who play a musical bow with a gourd resonator, exactly like the Berimbao. The ancestors of these groups of people in Angola would have been taken to Brazil as slaves. Several other rhythms played by the San and the Umwila are in complex meters with time signatures of 5, 4, and 7. This is what our ancestors looked like. This is what they did. You know, this is important. This this looks like he could be related to all of us. I mean, we all have relatives that look like that. Um, so this is our this is our history. OK. We'll skip ahead a little bit. If you appreciate what I'm doing. If you appreciate what I'm doing, contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. All right, uh, let's keep looking. On the other side of the Bay of All Saints is Itaparica Island. Over 90% of the island's population is descended from Africans and the indigenous Tupi Guarani people. The majority of the people on the island live in poverty. The island contains several quilombos. These are communities that were formed by fugitive slaves we learned about the quilombos, right? They said it was harder to take a quilombo than a, a trained military force. And are still inhabited today. The word quilombo comes from the native Angolan language, Kimbundu. 
Remember, it said the, it got so bad. The Brazilian army said, "We not, we not even gonna deal with them. Like they fight too hard. They that's why slavery ended because they said there's too many Quilombos out there. There's too many. We're not trying to get them. We're not doing it. We're not gonna go out there and die to capture. Bring some more here. They just quit. To Itaparica to learn about the history of capoeira from a capoeira master named Haiteldo Berimbau, who lives in Quilombo Terere. He runs his own association of art and culture where he teaches the youth in the community how to practice African-rooted art forms like capoeira and makulele and play the musical instruments associated with them. He does all of this free of charge to his students. This is Brazil. This is it's very similar to how it was back when our people uh, ran off and, and started these Quilombos. This is not Rio de Janeiro. This is Brazil. Let's take a look at it. Então, meu nome é Adatelos Conceição das Neves, mais como conhecido no mundo artístico como Rei Tel do Birimbau. Comecei a arte. My name is Anatelson Conceição das Neves, best known as the artist Haitel do Berimbau. I started practicing the art of capoeira in 1988, and I've been practicing capoeira for 29 years. I was born on the island of Itaparica in Veracruz, in a quilombo called Terere. Terere is a Tupi Guarani word that means fusion of herbs. Deu origem à comunidade onde hoje é a comunidade tradicional quilombola. Within this community today, we find capoeira and candomblé tejeros. It was here that the Tupi lived, the first inhabitants of this island and Brazil. However, this place also became a quilombo, where fugitive slaves would take refuge and use agriculture as a means of survival. Today, I am happy to live in this community where I learned to play soccer, capoeira, samba de roda, and maculele. I know some of you guys probably think this is boring, but this is our history. And this is something that we need to be able to talk about intelligently. This belongs to you. This belongs to our ancestors. But, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I know it's not the most, it's interesting to me, you know. Um, but the thing is, the more information you learn, the more things you learn, um, the more enriched you will become about your own history. And people can't fake you out and psych you out and have you thinking, uh, all these horrible things about our ancestors and where they came from because you know too much about your own history. It's a shame that uh, there are other groups of people who know more about our history as Africans uh, than we do. But uh, either way, I will go ahead and put the link in the chat room. Anybody who wants to add anything, you want to talk about this conversation, go ahead. I hope you guys appreciate the sacrifice that I'm making here to do the research, learn, learn about these things, and then present them to you, just put it right here. Maybe you don't want to, um, you know, maybe it won't catch on today, but at some point, at some point, maybe you'll come back and listen to this because, you know, it, it, it looks like something that we need to understand because it's ours. It looks like it's part of our culture to me. It looks like is something that's important and I hope you guys take it, you know, take it ser seriously and appreciate what I'm doing here. Um, again, I believe that we need to begin to celebrate our African culture. I believe we need to do that. Why? Because by celebrating our African culture, celebrating our warrior culture, we will embrace it and we will embrace it and we'll become more like these warriors. We'll become more like these people who ran off to these Colombos and said, I'd rather die fighting and be a slave. That's the sort of mentality that you have to have. 
Remember, it was the it was the slaves, it was the escaped Africans in those Colombos who practiced capoeira, who made the Brazilian army quit and say, "Look, we're not going after them anymore." It's because of what they did, because of that warrior culture. You cannot enslave a warrior, not for long. You can't down that mentality. You can't do anything with it. They're not going to cooperate. So remember that. This is why you. This is why you want to instill in your children and in yourself that warrior culture. Anybody who wants to join in, come on in. In the meantime, hit the cash app, the PayPal, super chat. We got like sixteen people in here, man. I had four hundred people in here earlier, man. <laughs> I got 16, but I'm still at it, man. I'm doing it because I know this needs to be done. Uh, I appreciate you guys, man. Hey, if you make sure you hit the like button, hit the like button, and um, I want to make sure we get that going on too. And uh, we'll continue this. If you like what I'm doing? Make sure you just you know hit the hit the like button, man. Show me you appreciate what I'm doing. Hit the number one button. Let me know. You know what I'm saying? I wanna I wanna hear what you guys got to say about this thing. Man. You like it, man? It's cool. Let's run with it, you know. But anyway, James, what's up, man? How you doing, James? Come on in. What are your thoughts on this conversation? Hey, brother Dave, what's going on? Pleasure as always. Uh, you know, regardless if there's sixteen and or one, um, I appreciate the conversation. I appreciate your enlightenment. Yeah. In regards, you know, to yeah. If I said black women fighting capoeira, oh man, we'd be. <laughs> if I said Kevin Samuels fighting capoeira, everybody would have been here, man. The algorithm, but. You know, because it's uh, because this is this type of subject, uh, folks. You know, it, it it it's just not some people. But I think this is probably one of the more important hours that we have when we actually talk about this history and our history. But go ahead, bro. What are your thoughts on this thing? Um. So, uh, my experience because I've been to Brazil, um, I've been to South Africa, and obviously, mm -hmm. um, I come from a Haitian background, um. Fighting culture, especially, I think it was mostly from Western Africa, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's actually breaded in us, right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, especially brothers, when you don't really look at, like, the, um, what's the famous uh, general? Uh, was it Genghis Khan? Not Genghis Khan. Yeah. Well, Genghis and the other young brother, um, they always talk about Hannibal Barker, right? Mm -hmm. There are too many, I think a lot of brothers, when they don't do the research and dig deep, on how, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, we go by these non-European standards of defense. Mm -hmm. You look at the 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 history behind. It, you'd be shocked how military militarized we were with very not even with the modern day weapon of that time, right? Mm -hmm. Intelligence, the you know, using strategy. Um, the 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 most important thing, the amount of discipline to actually lure or create chaos, you know, against an opposing threat at that time, where I yeah. think a lot of us, we don't realize one, how significant that is. And then even the Europeans don't want to admit how intelligent we really are. And I think when you look at those particular stamp, those particular points, it really shows that we are very, very intelligent people when it comes to war. And, and very strategic and we need to really look deep into that and embellish that moving forward and spread that knowledge in everyday use in life mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and that's what i've got out of it coming from you know looking at haitian history fighting the french you know some of the things that you know which is still like i see i wasn't born there but going there and seeing that real fighter spirit where haitians have that mentality like you know what like you know, I'll die. Like, mm -hmm. Death is not an issue. And I think one of the famous stories, and I forget it, what it was, I think it was Napoleon's second in command. Um, you know, they sent a, you know, squadron team to basically get, you know, a particular person. And I forget the gentleman's name, but they had ambushed him, basically boxed him in, in a house. So they mm -hmm. said, all right, you know, burn the house down. And one right. of the stories in Haiti is that the gentleman, that they tried to burn the house down with, he would basically walk out of the house, basically in flames, looked at <laughs> them, and he laughed. He literally uh, laughed and would yeah. turn back around and walk back into the into the burning house. Uh huh. And that's so. It, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 man. So the thing is, from earlier on in the conversation, I read where 
the ancestors, you could perform capoeira and connect with the ancestors. Yes. Um, our African brothers and sisters had a different concept of death. When you died, you went to be with the ancestors. Yes. You didn't end forever. And you could come back in the form of your children. You could come back in the form of your descendants. Yes. So death was not the death. It wasn't the absolute end. So they weren't afraid of death. Death was just another cycle. And so that is part of the warrior culture. You see, it, it, it's the same thing with the samurai, to die honorable. If you yes. were dishonorable, you would create, you, you would open your guts up and kill yourself because, you know, it was just, death was more important than this. Uh, death was more, uh, was less, death was favored over dishonor. You see what yes. I'm saying, James? So, yes, I'm glad you brought that up because Hannibal mm -hmm. Barker's father, before he died, and there's like a, and I read this in one of the literatures. So when the Romans were really, I'm sorry, when his father was in power, mm -hmm. and he basically said, put his, basically picked up his son over like a, a pit of fire. Yeah. He basically challenged his faith, right? He said, if I drop you in this, right, will you accept death in a sense where you fight to the death to protect us as who we are? Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the time, Hannah Barker was crying. He was scared, but he agreed like, yes, father. And then when you fast forward, Hannah Barker was like, that was the turning point. My father turned me into a man and helped me realize no man shall conquer me. And that's 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 deep rooted. And I, I'm glad you brought that up. That is it is very even in Haiti, like the one of the skill sets that I wish they read, like a lot of Haitians would really learn is the machete. Right. Because mm -hmm. That was heavily used against the French army. That's why when you go to the sugar canes in Haiti, that's why you notice like the sugar canes are so cut, so precise. Oh. And was working in the sugar cane fields and that's what they used. That's that was one of their ways of building very like marksmanship with the you know with the machete to cut precisely. Mm -hmm. So when you're cutting the sugar canes and you're cutting them at it like I'm talking about like vertically like just straight yeah, you know, geometrical, surgically, that was the same tactics they use against the French to like, you know, attack Ooh. limbs and everything. Mm -hmm. So there's like well, they were getting their wax on, wax off practice, and nobody exactly. knew. <laughs> nobody knew. Like everybody, oh, go work uh, in the fields. They're like, okay, yeah, we're gonna work. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you, you my, my thing is, I hope what we're doing here today is dispelling the fact that we were just compliant. Uh, happy to be, we fought it every step of the way, all the way we could, and it just took us 200 and some odd years to escape. You know, that's I want to make sure we dispel the fact that we were, we were, we, you know, we were all in with it. You know, we fought, you know, and that's just that's something we should be proud of, you know, and that's kind of something I wanted to focus on, James. No, thank you so much. I appreciate your input. We're gonna continue this. I think I might keep this series going if we can get some more turnout. I want to talk about 52 Blocks, which is an American fighting system started by folks up in New York. I think it, I'm going to do the history on it, but that's another fighting system I want to talk about because I think it, it, it has African roots, i.e. it was started by African-Americans. And so I want to talk about that. And um, But in the meantime, man, uh, thank you so much, James. Uh, I'm sorry, Malika. What's up, bro? How you doing? Peace, brother. How you doing? Peace, brother James. I'm good, man. It looked like I'm boring everybody to death out here with this, man. Ain't nobody don't. We got like 17 people. I'm used to having 800 people in here. They don't want to talk about this. This black history is boring. <laughs> <laughs> but what are your thoughts on this, man? Uh, so first of all, um, I appreciate this. Yeah. And it's um something that's great that it's showing that we as African descendants have strong warrior roots. Mm -hmm. And yeah. The beautiful thing um, about capoeira, not linear martial art. And okay, understand- explain to people what you mean by that, because you know, folks might not get it. Linear, straight line. Um, mm -hmm. Majority of your Japanese martial arts, karate, that's a very linear, straight um, martial art. Mm -hmm. um, Nonlinear, meaning that you're moving in areas. You're not moving in a straight line. You're moving off your your center line. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Chinese martial arts is like that. Um, the, the Kung Fu, that's right. That's exactly Kung right. Fu. Yeah. And if you want to really take a look at Wushu, is a very it's that's disguised as a sport, but it's also a fighting component to it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but capoeira is a very nonlinear form because like how you said, you have to have stand spatial awareness. Also, you have to use a lot of athleticism using your body, you're using your head, your hands, your feet. And also at the same time, you have to still be on beat to the music. Mm -hmm. And it's using a lot of understanding of how, one thing you have to understand, like we're very, we black people all over the diaspora is a spiritual form. Just like how the yeah. way we dance, like it's the form where the way we can maneuver our bodies in a certain way. But mm -hmm. what we, what Capoeira did was it combined dance and a fighting system mm -hmm. but at the same time it made you to be clever to go against the colonizers in that area. But to um, put on something that you said, and I have to commend you for this, you started your sons young to teach them martial arts and teach them to become warriors. Right. And this is something that men must do. This is a masculine thing, but especially we as black men must do. I didn't study martial arts later on in my life for six and a half years, American freestyle karate. But mm -hmm. when you understand what it's about, and not just, I, I'm gonna say there's a Taekwondo master named Jun Ri, passed away a few years ago. He said, martial arts, without, martial arts without no philosophy is a bunch of punching and kicking. And I really want brothers to understand that. If you don't understand the philosophy, if you don't understand the principles, you don't understand that, you know, you're learning something that you could hurt somebody, which you also could kill somebody. And you have to understand that when you learn it, you know that you don't have to get yourself involved in a fight so quickly or at all. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, that old saying is better to know something, to know something, not at all. You're teaching your son various forms of martial arts, but not to strengthen their bodies, but strengthen their minds and their spirits. And you said something very important. So your sons won't be a hindrance on to society. Right. You want them to be self-sufficient, not just mentally and not just educationally, but physically. I remember... Um, the episode where, you know, in your um, TV show, ex-wife was kind of against them learn martial arts. And right. I like how the way- It's gonna make them violent. They're gonna be violent. I'm like, no, it, it actually works the opposite way. But go ahead, bro. And I remember um, years ago, I was talking to a chick and she was, she was a black woman. She was saying kind of the same thing. I said, okay, what happens if you got a guy, if I'm with you and something jumps off? And I'm mm -hmm. looking at you and you're looking at me. Like, what you going to do? I'm like, well, I don't know how to do nothing because you didn't want me to be violent. But the thing is, that's the problem with women. Women want men to be masculine and controlled and violent when it suits them. So yeah. you can't do that. You can't have it your way. Martial science and martial fighting and just martial war is a masculine trait. That's why, you're, that's why your ex-wife couldn't understand it. This is a masculine trait. I'm yeah. teaching these boys to how to survive. And this is the biggest thing, but you're also not teaching them how to survive. You're teaching them how to survive, but be having that controlled violence. Mm -hmm. Good martial arts teachers and instructors and students know to how to have a controlled level of violence. You know, there's enough, you know, when to put in enough aggression. Also, you know, when to walk away, you yeah. know, when you can, you know, I can knock this fool out, but you know, you can walk away from it. And, and the main thing is what we're learning. And I love what you're teaching, especially with the black samurai like Yasuki. And definitely, you know, you're coming up with um, Brazilian martial arts, but also you're coming with the 52 blocks. And I love that you put that in. Yeah. And that's a like modern martial arts. And I'm not going to say nothing about it. That's your, that's what you're going to No, say. man, go ahead, man. Cause we're going to, I'm going I'm to air it out. We're going to talk about it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just hope you guys enjoy what I'm doing here. I, I just hope that this series, if it doesn't pick up today, man, I hope people revisit this. Cause you know, I feel like 52 blocks is something that's under it. Yeah. We've talked about it, but I like to analyze it and compare it to some of the other you know, uh, martial arts, because it, it's ours. It belongs to us. Capoeira exactly. belongs to us. Uh, 
and, and 52 blocks is something that's uniquely black American. You know, yeah, Capoeira is African, you know, from this, uh, from Congo, but 52 blocks is something that's uniquely ours and we should embrace it. I don't know if you guys know any 52 blocks practitioners who'd like to come in, send an email to me. My email is spurlingdennis at gmail.com. I want to talk about it at some point. And if I can set it up where the brothers can actually sit back and talk, because, you know, all I have is what I research. But, you know, so if you know some guys up in the New York area, Philly, wherever, let's bring them in. You know, and one thing James, the kid said, the world of the ancestors was inverted. That's why in Nogolo, we did handstands. That's dope, James. I didn't know that, man. Thank you so much for that enlightenment. And I kind of remember, if you guys remember when we were watching, everybody was watching, uh, uh, the uh, Black Panther, right? Remember how he turned upside down when he went there? You noticed that? Uh huh. Yeah, but uh, either way, go ahead, bro. Finish up. They said we got problems buffering. Ain't nobody, you know. But go ahead, go ahead and finish up. Bro. One of the beautiful things about Fit Two Blocks, um, mm -hmm. it originated in the prisons and also originated with street fighting. Mm -hmm. Um The street fighting, jailhouse rock, and also just street context and few elements of martial arts one of the great things about that fighting system it deals with close quarters combat just like right. Jeet Kune Do, just like krav ga mm -hmm. and the fighting system is it deals with a lot of elbow strikes a lot of punching strikes boxing a lot of trapping a lot of grabbing a lot of grappling, standing up grappling mm -hmm. on how to move in knowing how to move out move in and also it breaks the, it also breaks the linear movement also mm -hmm. and the thing is if you realize reason some of the um elements come from the jail because there's a lot of fights that are in close quarter combats in cells right. and little, little areas to hide away from cameras hide away from uh COs but also you got to realize in a lot of times in the black communities, it's definitely close quarters combat. You're not all in the open. It's about uh, getting in and getting out. And that's mm -hmm. one of the main things that you, you have to understand. Another thing is which you, a great thing that you're teaching your sons. You're teaching them combat awareness and also teaching them street smarts by going in martial arts. It's understanding right. in is not, you know, this is not cinematic. This is not no big grand fight that lasts for like five to ten minutes. No, it's in and out. Most of your right. fights don't last like that. And another thing is you're teaching them to understand how to deal with combat, how to deal with situations that, you know, how am I going to get out of this? See, a lot of kids, they, like you said, dealing with hyper-masculinity and being raised by females, it's all or nothing. It's either fight or flight or I'm going to stand and fight and do something to the end. No. In mm -hmm. martial arts, you know when to get in, get out, and you're like, okay, every fight you don't need to fight, you can walk away. Right, nothing to and prove because you, you are, yeah, there's nothing to prove. And also, you deal with the situation if they, you know, if they put their hands on me, I'm going to put my hands on them. You just mm -hmm. learn how to deal with that, but all you learn not to get into situations, but also to see the situation bruise before it can even happen. And yeah. it's just something that it's, I agree with you. I agree that almost every black man in America, no matter what socioeconomic situation, should learn a form of martial arts. They mm. should at least know a basic form of martial arts. And they know at how least, to do At it. least boxing. At least know yes. how to throw a punch, block, you know, bob, weave. You at least know how to do some basic. Turn that fist over. At least something. But also know how to take carry. also know how to take a punch. How to yeah, how to take a punch, how to roll off of that punch, you know. Uh get your fat ass up off the goddamn couch sometimes. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you guys. Stop being so soft, man. But look, man, James and Malik, Malik, I appreciate you guys, man. I, I think we have some, we have a thunderstorm that's hitting Houston right now. They're giving out flash floods. So most people yeah. can't see what we're doing live, but they'll be able to see it on the recording. And hear everybody. But look, you guys, if you appreciate what I'm doing, make sure you patronize. You know, make sure you watch. We, you know, I, I want you guys to show. I'm going to keep this title going. I'm going to talk about Dambe. I'm going to talk about 
uh, several other forms of martial arts. I'm going to talk about loot. And we already talked about the Ing Nguni sticks, Nuba, uh, Zulu stick fighting. We're talking about mm -hmm. Capoeira. I'm going to talk about 52 blocks. We're going we gonna to talk about it, you know, because I think it's something that I ain't never seen nobody talk about it on uh, YouTube. So, you know, I think it's important that we do. But uh, either way, man, thanks, James. You guys have been great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been very informative. Some of the stuff I'm learning here from you guys and, and everybody else in the chat room, chat room has been awesome. But in the meantime, man, I appreciate it. It's we were an hour and 30 minutes in, so we've done it for a show. We're good. You guys, if you appreciate what I'm doing, contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. Shout out to Luke Oliver. And uh, let me see. Shout out to Damon J. Uh, those are the only two guys that contributed. But that's all right, man. This is a great time I've had. And I can talk about this stuff all night. After watching my kids practice martial arts for seven, eight years, different forms of martial arts, you know, it's just something I've grown to, to love and enjoy. And, uh, you know, I'm an observer. I'm that type of person. So, Brother. you know, it's a great thing. But either way, I appreciate you guys. This is Uncle D. I'm out. <laughs>